excuse me, Paul, I was thinking, well, he really does get a bit of a raw deal, doesn't he? Well, on with this week's story, and it's all about a young lady and her adventures in the snow. It's called Geraldine's Big Snow. Now, I know it's not very appropriate with the summer, but, you know, it'll get us in a mood for winter. <laughs> if we want to be reminded. Now, if you're sitting comfortably, I reckon I'll start. Geraldine brought her sledge down from the attic and put her new boots near the door. I'm ready, she said. It will come faster if you don't watch so much, Mama told her. But Geraldine wanted to watch. Tell me again what Papa heard on the radio, she said. This is the last time, Geraldine, Mama scolded. He heard that there is a big storm coming and there will be at least a foot of snow. How much is a foot? Geraldine asked. Mama held out her hand. Wow, Geraldine said, sucking in her cheeks. But when? Soon, said Mama, very soon. Geraldine put on her hat and her jacket. I'm going outside to wait. Good, Mama said. Hello, Geraldine, said Mrs. Wilson, who was coming home from the market. You bought a lot of apples, Geraldine said. Mrs. Wilson nodded. It will be hard to go shopping when the snow comes. Geraldine walked along with her eyes on the sky until she bumped into Mr. Peters, who was coming home from the library. Afternoon, Geraldine, Mr. Peters grumbled as he picked up his book. I'm sorry, Geraldine said. I was watching for the snow. Mr. Peters cleared his throat. <coughs> Better get plenty of good books to read. Geraldine stopped to watch Mr. Harper put seeds in his bird feeder. Birds get hungry in the snow, he said. Uncle Albert was attaching the snow plow to his truck. He waved to Geraldine, and Geraldine waved back. Geraldine started to sing. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. She sang all the way home and watched the sky. But by supper time, there was still no snow, and Geraldine was weary from watching. Maybe it isn't really coming, she said. Maybe the man on the radio is wrong. Maybe Mrs. Wilson and Mr. Peters and Mr. Harper and Uncle Albert are all wrong. Geraldine took a last look out of the window. A star was hiding behind a cloud and she watched it until she fell asleep. Then, in the night, it came, softly and quietly, millions of snowflakes piled up on high houses and trees. They made soft mounds on the streets and in the parks and beautiful crystals on the windows. Geraldine heard Uncle Albert's snowplow before she'd opened her eyes. It's here, she shouted, it's here! Mrs. Wilson got right to work making apple pies. Mr. Peters sat in front of his fireplace reading. Mr. Harper counted 11 finches and three cardinals at his bird feeder. And Geraldine took her sledge to the top of the highest hill in the park and coasted all the way down. <laughs> yes, I know it's not snowing, but never mind. Now, a trip to Wimpole Village plus more Sunday Club with Rowan and your pickies and letters. So I reckon it's a bit of a cue, George, after the break. I'll see you in a little while. Launched by Apollo astronaut Buzz Aldrin, the most spectacular ride in the galaxy is open all summer. The Missile of the American Adventure. Ride it now. Challenge continues. We're into movies. And we're, we're really into movie stars. And we're most of all into Superstar Buddy. Superstar Buddy on the movie screen. Superstar Buddy changing for a scene. She's in the gorgeous clothes and her hair's a dream. Superstar Buddy, movie queen. We're into Barbie. We're into Barbie. Superstar Barbie comes with her own stand and a star bracelet that you can wear. New from Mattel. Now there's a new Hippopotta Yog. A fantastically fruity yogurt from Shamborsi. Delightfully delicious with vitamins nutritious. Mmm. It's so full of goodness. You've just got to dive in. Now enjoy all kinds of Hippopotta Yog from Shamborsi. Come on. Dive in.
Welcome back to the Flag Piggies for this Sunday. Now, Sarah Kenny from Leeds has sent in a brilliant Jamaican flag here and a badge too, which I should pop on as well. So thank you for that. Next down on the line is from Catherine Gregory, and it's a flag of Hungary. No, what am I saying? Air in Ireland. I've got Hungary on the brain. I must need breakfast. So thank you, Catherine. Catherine's six years old. And loads of badges and a brilliant Welsh flag here. And that one comes from Lindsay Smith from Hawkhead in Paisley. I like that. It's great. Next one, ah, now we're going really south now because this is a flag of Tonga and apparently Tonga, well, this is for sure, Tonga is uh, in the Pacific north of New Zealand, so it's way down south. Now, if you'd like to send me a flag, then hang on till the end of the show when I'll give you the address to write into. And that Tonga flag comes from, let me have a look, Amy James. So thank you, Amy. She's from Daventry in North End, so thank you very much. Now, in the meantime, are you ready for some Sunday clubbing? Yes, with Rowan. Well, let's get over there then. Good morning, Rowan. Thanks very much, George. Nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too. And thank you very much for joining Sunday Club. I hope you've had a good week. If you've been on holiday, well, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Now, we've got a new story today. It's all about the weather. And we're going to meet the winners of the Sunday Club song competition and hear their song. It's great fun. But to first, let's look at a few of your pictures. We've had some lovely thank you card ideas. I like this one here from Emma Westwood, who's 13, from Crowborough in East Sussex. And she has a prayer inside too. Dear Lord, to preserve our environment is the key to make it last for eternity. Please, Lord, hear our plea and save each and every country. And here's another thank you for animals. Isn't that nice there? That's from Michael Peck, who's seven, from Ashtiff. And one more animal, a nice little black cat from Fiona Thorburn, who's eight, from Russia. And I'm very glad too that you enjoy Sunday Club, Fiona. And this is a very well-drawn card by Montserrat Martinez from London. And she says, to all the doctors and nurses who help people every day, we give them a big thank you. And I've got a nice prayer, too, from uh, Victoria Martin from uh, Worley Week in the East Midlands, who's 13. And she says, dear God, thank you for all the health and happiness you've given us. Thank you for the grass, the flowers, and also the trees. Don't let us waste our time being upset. We only live once. Well, that's a very sensible outlook. Now, we've had uh, quite a few pictures, too, of Moses. I've got this uh, bright one here of him crossing the Red Sea, and that's from Fiona Roxburgh, who's almost 10, from Suffolk. And here he is, writing the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone, and that's uh, by Joanne Davis from Bolton in Lanks, and she's 10 and a half. Another one from Lancashire, that's by Emma Jane Burkitt, who's 7, and God there is dictating the commandments to Moses, and he's saying there, don't tell lies. Now, do you know which uh, one of the commandments that is? It's the eighth. And of course, telling lies often does get us into terrible trouble, and it can make us feel bad about ourselves too. And here's a colorful picture by Tracy Pyle, who's 10 from Devon. That's a nice part of the country for this time of year. And her prayer says, dear God, thank you for everything you've made for us. We thank you for everything too you've done for us. Now, for the results of our song competition, our three winners are with us here, and that's Robert, Matthew, and Eleanor Vale from Matlock, and of course, Gordon who uh, you know does most of our tricks for us, but he's also a record producer and he's helped us choose the winning song. Gordon, was it very difficult? To choose oh, it, it was very difficult. And there were great songs, uh, great tunes and great words, and it was a very difficult job to do, yes. 
And what was the most common sort of theme in these songs? The main theme was about God who created the world, created us, and created everything around us. Yeah. And we spent yesterday recording this in a proper studio with the CTS studios in Wembley. I believe you've had some famous music. Oh, yes. It's where they do all the James Bond music and the new Batman music as well. We'll look forward to hearing it in a minute. But, Eleanor, let me ask you, um, what gave you the idea for this, uh, this song? The peach, the pear and the apple tree, it's called, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, I thought, why, why don't we just enter this competition? And I thought, God made the world, so why don't we put the first line in God made the world for you and me? And I made up the first line, and that line, and then Robert made up the second line, and it's built up gradually, so... so it's That's very good. Um, Robert, how long did it take you to do it? Well, <coughs> it was about... Um, we did the first part, and that took about ten minutes to get it started, and then it, it, it got a bit easier, and um, all in all, it took about fifteen minutes. Do you play any musical instruments yourself? Yes, I play the piano and the recorder and the guitar, and I've just started the cello. Gosh, don't you find the time for that? Mm. <laughs> Matthew, what about you? Do you? What do you play? I play the um, clarinet and the piano. Do you think you ever might make the Vale pop group? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you never know. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's see the song anyway. Uh, and here it is, the peach, the pear, and the apple tree. Right, so don't forget take kids, so watch the red light, tape rolling, start the music now. was lovely. It did very, very well, especially you, Gordon. <laughs> now, we've got a little surprise for you coming up. I think Gordon wants to uh, give well, you something. it's something that only pop stars normally get. Something very, very special. And for winning Gosh. the song competition, it's a gold disc for each one of you. They would try to hold that little bit. Ladies should hold it. There we are. That's beautiful. Well done. You want to hold it up until we can all see? Isn't that terrific? Well, TV and Sunday Club song competition winners. Congratulations, all of you. They look really, really good. Did you enjoy that? Yes. You did a very good job. Now, for our story. It's all about a rather naughty boy called Miles, and something that everyone's talking about at the moment, the weather. Now, Miles lived in a very big town, and he liked to play on the local rubbish dump. That, of course, is very naughty, because it can be dangerous and dirty, yeah. But he was always finding things, very strange things. One day, he saw a rather nice chest of drawers. Now, somehow, he managed to drag it right the way home, although it was quite heavy. He thought it would be useful to keep things in. Well, then he noticed that each drawer had a little brass plate. They were so dirty, but Miles decided to clean them. He found the words, light rain. Then he tried another drawer, and that read, bright sunshine. He cleaned another label, and that said, thunder. Miles was very puzzled, so he decided to open this drawer. There was an almighty crash and the whole backyard shook. Well, by the time Miles had cleaned all the drawers, he had quite a collection of labels. Breezes, hurricanes, showers, fog, sun, and even a drawer marked sandstorm. Well, to make sure that he wasn't dreaming all this, Miles opened one more drawer, and that was marked Howling Gale. It was a terrific wind. He was nearly blown in next door's garden. Well, this is very amazing, said Miles to himself. I can make a fortune with this wonderful chest like this. And off he went to make a phone call. Now, we'll see what happened to Miles next Sunday. He was certainly going to learn quite a lesson. And next week, too, will be our last Sunday club for the moment. So do join me. I hope Timmy Mallet's going to be here, too. In the meantime, why not uh, paint a picture of your favourite Miles story and send it to me at the usual address, Sunday Club, TVAM, PO Box 200, 
London NW18TQ. I look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy your Sunday. Now from all of us here, from our talented songwriters, from Gordon, we'll say goodbye. God bless you. Let's go back to George. Thanks, Ryan. Brilliant song, you lot. Absolutely wonderful. Now, barking into action is Fred Bassett. And this pick is from Simone Clark, who's ten and a half and comes from Dover. And I've got a badge, too, which I'll have to put on a little bit later. Let's take a break, a TV break with Fred. The TV set has broken down. Oh, what a calamity. Come on, then. How about a spot of scintillating chat? It's up to us all to make our own entertainment. To make our own fun. Fun? 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 No. Then how about a jolly game? It's called Hide and Seek. I've hidden the slipper, and now he's having lots of fun seeking. No, it's not under there. It looks very cold. Now, that really is very cold. It's the fridge. <laughs> now, that's warmer, I think. Oh, dearie, dearie me, I've forgotten where I hid it. I really have. Well, I've had enough of this. Um, come on, Fred. Uh, let's have a walk on the common. Funny way to get to the common. Come on, Fred. It's opening time. Huh. A pint, please, Mavis, and uh, the usual for Fred. Oh, poor old Fred. Pork pies is all love. The pork pies is all love. No more pork pies. Well, I'll have to settle for crisps then. I expect you'd have a packet of crisps. What flavour, dear? Cheese and onion? No, pork pie. Are you? You've been drinking more beer. Well, no. I suspect it's but a bother. Uh, I, I, I don't think I have, old man. Well, I'll show you have. It's going to cost you a pint. Give this gentleman a pint, Mavis. Sure. Drama over. Watch this, Mavis. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I wonder if you could tell me the right time. Right time? Sure. The right time is you. <laughs> TV? Hurry, Fred. It could be mended, and we could be back home by now. Is it back yet? Here. So now, he's taking it out of the lawn. We can cut this little bit later. Hello? Someone's at the door. Better do me guard dog bit. What the... <laughs> Must be his long lost brother. No, it's the TV repairman. Our TV, it's come back. <laughs> Good. I never did like that bird box. Just in time for the cereal. Sorry to trouble you, Fred, but I wonder if I could have my chair. Thank you very much. Awfully good of you. These feet are killing me. Why don't you get off my back, mate? Fancy going about wearing only one slipper. Funny fella. Now, once upon a time, there was another slipper just like that. Um, and I hid it somewhere. Now, where? Oh, where? I remember. I hid it under here. Here it is, safe and sound under the television table. Fred! Fred? Now, one mustn't give in. It's up to us all to make our own entertainment. How about the jolly game? This time it's their turn to hide the slipper. <laughs> oh, poor Fred, he doesn't really get it right, does he? <laughs> Someone else is not getting it right, and that's the grumbler. This is from Katie McGill, who lives in Charlton. She says, please tell my sister Emma to stop grumbling and tell her to be happy. <laughs> and thanks for my badge as well. I have to wear that next week. Now, thanks for my badge. A uh, bit of a spooky little number in Wimpole Village. It's all about ghosts, so get spooking. <clears throat> In a minute. Hold a little wimple in your heart and you'll get through. Hold a little wimple in your heart, I'm telling you. If the outlook is bleak and it's guidance you seek, put on your wimple hat and you'll know what to do. Hold a little Farther away.
Day had just finished a very busy week. He had organized a village fete, a coconut shy competition, conducted the Wimpole Village Band, and written a very long sermon for the Sunday service. So he really did deserve 40 winks before opening the church. That very evening, Ethel Doneeder was on her way to the church when... Oh my goodness! Ghosts! Uh, we've got ghosts in the village! Oh! Uh, did I hear you say ghosts? Uh, there's no such thing as a... Um... Oh no! I must be seeing things! It couldn't have been... By egg, but I'm off back me farm! The next morning, they told PC Crooknapper about the ghosts. You really will have to arrest those ghosts, PC Crooknapper. She's right, PC Crooknapper. Uh, our village must be haunted. Uh, now, calm down. I'm sure we can uh, sort it all out. Poor old PC Crooknapper. He really wasn't sure how to arrest a ghost. Um... I'll phone Mayor Chambers. Uh, he's very important and will know what to do. Um, hello. Uh, Mayor Chambers here. PC Crooknabber explained about the ghosts. Oh, um, ghosts? Did you say ghosts? Oh, um, well, we, we better have a meeting then. Later that day, they all went to Mayor Chambers' very important house. Um, now, w what are we going to do about this, um, uh, ghost thing? Ah, sounds like a lot of poppycock to me, now. Uh, yes, Major, uh, but Horace and Ethel did actually uh, see them. Oh, I know. Perhaps they'll just go away by themselves. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Ah, jolly fine idea, Father. Uh, but I'm sure Ethel and Horace just imagined it all anyway. But that night, the village was deserted. Nobody dared go out, just in case. But the next morning, everybody had quite a shock. Ted Dripping's butcher's sign was hanging over Percy Pennywise's general shop. The blue police lamp was hanging outside Ethel Doneeder's cake and bread shop. And Ethel's sign was stuck in the middle of the village green. Poor old PC Crooknabber. These ghosts really were causing a problem. Now, don't worry, everybody. I'll go out tonight and see if I can catch them. Oh, um, yes. Well, what a good idea, Father. Uh, well, you being the vicar and all. <laughs> that night... Farther away, crept through the deserted village and hid amongst the bushes. He didn't have to wait long. The ghosts were back. Oh, dearie me! Why ever did I volunteer for this? Oh, no! They're going to turn the signpost to read the wrong way! Right! That's it! I'll get them now! But just as Farther Away was about to pounce... Come on! Let's muddle up this time before we go home to bed! <laughs> Well, I'm blowed. It's those naughty twin red snappers. I caught you. Now, you've been very naughty boys, and I know just the thing that'll teach you both a lesson. The next morning, everybody gathered to hear what had happened. Well, I don't think you'll be seeing ghosts in our village anymore. <laughs> everybody was very relieved. But what they couldn't understand was why the twin bread snappers were so busy sweeping up leaves, helping everybody carrying their shopping, and generally being so very sweet and nice. But we know why, don't we? We certainly do. They are wicked, aren't they? Now, as Roanne said, it's the last Sunday club next Sunday, and it's also the last Q George as well. So if you want to drop me a line, your last chance for next Sunday, you can write to this address. Q George, TVAM, PO Box 200, London NW180Q. And you can also get your birthday messages to me that way as well. Now I'll be back tomorrow morning coming to you from a desert island. Yes, with Batman, Benji, Punky Brewster. And uh, all the fun starts at 6 a.m. So uh, you better be there. More cartoons starting on Channel 4 now. I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You've all 
heard of Webster, now meet the family. They live in this playhouse with their very own TV. Whoa! Kitty Craft! Clark's Hardware. The challenge continues. We're into movies. And, and we're, we're really into, into movie stars. stars. And we're most of all into Superstar Barney. Superstar Barney on the movie screen. Superstar Barney changing for a scene. She's in the gorgeous clothes and her hair's a dream. Superstar Barney, movie queen. We're into Barbie. Superstar Barbie comes with her own stand and a star bracelet that you can wear. New from Mattel. As we all know, William the Conqueror became king in 1066. He died in 1087. And William the Second. Oh, he died in 1100. I want that. Sugar puffs, you'll go monster mad for the honey. <laughs> <laughs>